Okay, today we're going to go ahead and look at a hybrid turbo that I've got for the Blue Omni. I'm going to go ahead and try and get that installed. Ran into a few problems while I was out there, but uh, nonetheless, I'll go ahead and show you a comparison of the wheels and the compressor housings, and then we'll look at the unfortunate situation that was some broken bolts in the turbine housing. Okay, here we can see the size difference between the wheels that we're looking at here. So the compressor wheel on the left is a stock, what we would call a Turbo 2 compressor wheel. And that's a T3 frame wheel. On the left, this one's slightly different than the one on the turbo I'm going to be installing in the Omni. Uh, it gives you a good idea for size reference, though. I believe that's a 54 trim wheel that I've got sitting down there versus the 50 trim wheel that I've got going in the car. However, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that the exducer diameter of both of those wheels, the 54 and the 50, are the same. So, again, looking at those, it is a huge difference in size between the two. So that should be nice. The one on the right, you're talking on our 8 valve motors that we've got a, a max of maybe, let's say, 280, 290 horsepower. Somebody that's just absolutely 100% maxing it out and spinning it to the moon to the point it's not going to last very long. Uh, on the left, obviously, you're going to have much lower shaft speeds to move the same volume of air to make a greater amount of horsepower. Uh, Trade-off, of course, is going to be uh, the mass, uh, its moment of inertia is going to be much greater and so as a result it'll take a little bit more to get it going but we're not really worried so much with getting it going that's what uh, keeping the RPMs up is for you know you got it up there once it's uh, past the boost threshold it's not gonna be a problem it'll spool right up and you'll be happier to make more power uh, with lower shaft speeds and not replace turbos as often Okay, and again, you can see the size difference. I mean, just, just look at the inlet to the um, hybrid turbo on the right versus the one on the left. Um, pretty large difference there. Coke can for reference off to the left. Nothing huge, nothing too crazy, but again, the, uh, the 50 trim, you know, it's going to be capable of making 350 to 400 horsepower pretty easily. So uh, that'll be a good time, and uh, we'll get this installed today, because that's basically where we're at in this project right now. Okay, uh, we're looking at the swing valve right now. These look remarkably similar. There is quite the difference though. They're both a two and a half inch swing valve, which of course a two and a half inch downpipe mates up to perfectly. And then the three inch downpipe leaves a little bit to be desired there if you've ever tried to run a three inch downpipe on a two and a half inch swing valve, which most all of us have by now. Uh, you know that doesn't quite fit well, and if there's a lot of engine movement, it really tears up the uh, the donut and that on the downpipe. So what I've done is go ahead and the one on the right, you can see it's a little shinier in there. I went ahead and ported it out, and you can actually open it up quite a ways. It, um, honestly, it's, it's darn near three inches right there. I mean, a three inch downpipe fits in that thing perfectly. If I were to go any larger, it would uh, almost be two large of an opening for the three inch uh, donut that goes in there. Uh, and I didn't just do that like back at the back or something like that to where it fits in, but uh, there's a huge restriction. As you can see, it tapers nicely and um, it doesn't necessarily look, like, oh dear, doesn't necessarily look like it um, right right in, in this area here, but it is a nice smooth transition or as smooth as you can get with this uh, type of swing valve. And uh, it, it works well, it really does. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the unit on the right uh, to put on this Omni here. Uh, you guys at home, you can go ahead and, uh, and check out something like this. Maybe you want to try it in the future. Um, I also took just a tad bit of material off. This is probably not going to uh, help the, the view at all. Yeah, you, you can't really tell too much. But um, you can maybe see that there's just a little bit less of a space between the, uh, that bolt hole in the lower left there now and... Um, in the area where the exhaust can exit. So I didn't take out much there, obviously, because there's not a ton of room, but just I think opening it up that little bit and, um, and taking it down there, maybe that'll allow for a little bit easier exhaust flow out of the turbo and into that swing valve. It's already really cramped and less than ideal for flow. So we'll see what happens with that. But um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I've got one of these swing valves on my shadow that's a 2.5 and it does a heck of a job spooling up the turbo. I mean it it happens right away. So perhaps that's a little part of it there. I don't know but um, 
yeah, I'm sure also the fact that it's, you know, three inch mantle bent and just comes out the side doesn't hurt either. But um, nonetheless, uh, go ahead and give this a go in the, in the link uh, or in the description down at the bottom. Try and check out, um, there's a guy I've been following on YouTube, Turbo Tom, I think is his handle on there, or, or Tom's Turbo Garage, whatever it is. And um, not only are his videos pretty entertaining, but um, at the same time, he does, he's got a really good video that shows how he ports a turbo, uh, both the, um, the downpipe and the uh, actual turbine scroll itself and everything else. So uh, a lot of the same stuff that I've been doing for a while now, he's got a really killer video on it, so I'm not going to frankly waste the time uh, trying to put something like that together. So check out that video, subscribe to his channel, uh, he's got some darn good stuff. All right, well, uh, had a couple bolts I noticed on this turbo that were broken after I shot that first part of the video. So uh, on the one on the left there, I decided to use the uh, most ironically named um, item on the face of the plant, the Easy Out. That of course broke off in there, so now I'm going to do it in the old-fashioned way with a little bit of heat. So we're going to try some heat and of course some good old-fashioned vice grips, and we're going to report back soon. Okay, a ton of drill bits and uh, a lot of frustration later. I have both of the broken bolts out of the turbine housing. The bolt, I guess, all the way on the right, uh, well, really the right from the top one there. That one has been a bit oblonged. Of course, I had the easy out break off in there. What else would happen? But um, in addition to that, of course, you know, getting around it, I, I broke it with a punch. I just broke the easy out with a punch and drove it down into the housing. Then I went ahead and drilled around, drilled it out. I'm going to have to go ahead and get an easy, um, or excuse me, not an easy out. That is the wrong thing to do. I'm going to have to go ahead and get a little insert for that. So we'll go ahead and repair that. Um, that should be no problem. Frankly, the hole's about ready to be tapped, I bet. So we got that done. The other one came out just with a lot of heat, so good times. Lesson here, use heat, don't bother, bother with the easy outs. They're going to be nothing but frustration in the future. I'll go ahead and check back in. Uh, school's out in two days, so I will be working on this every day as though it were a real job. And uh, we'll do that maybe for a week or so, get the car running, get it out on the road, and we'll be all set. So I'm going to report back here soon. Uh, Go ahead, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll keep you updated on the project of this 86GLH.